What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. We're talking about Scream 6 and a little bit of Scream 5, I guess. Um, well, Scream 5 and Scream 6, I'll just say, here in this video. Because James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick had a interview recently with uh, the Horror Hour, the YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to the video in the description. And shout out to you, Yutaka, because I know I talked to you over on Twitter. Uh, and I see the channel is going, so I'm very happy for you and all of the success that the channel is having. But... Uh, they had an interview with the horror hour and they had some very interesting things that i just wanted to go over and share my thoughts on as it pertains to their thought process with scream 5 and you know going into scream 6. so james revealed in the interview that he was the one him and guy i guess pitched scream 5 to spyglass after word had broke that they were the ones that were going to be reviving the ip now in my memory i think that happened back in like late 2019 I believe because it was one of my favorite horror headlines to read that year and I think that was the same for a lot of you when you saw that headline that Spyglass or that anything related to Scream was being revived because a Spyglass had obtained it after the Weinstein fallout. So hearing this and what they had to say in this like I really don't think that these are fake fans like I know a lot of people think they are only because Dewey died or because they did something that you wouldn't have done do you realize how how foolish that kind of sounds though thousands of us are fans of this IP and would do different things with it some of us want to play it safe keep every legacy character alive and others are tired of that and would like to see the movies remain unpredictable while also uh being done with an effective script because when you say that someone's a fake fan only because they did something with the IP that you wouldn't have done, now depending on what it may be, okay, I can see where you're coming from, but just off of the basis of killing a character, that doesn't make you a fake fan. That doesn't make you a fake fan, not at all. Again, there's so many screen fans with so many different ideas of what they would want to do with the IP. Just because the idea that came to life isn't yours or isn't what you would do doesn't mean that the person who's doing this is a fake fan. Um. So going into some other stuff they had to talk about really quick in this interview, Guy touched on the 10 year gap between Scream 4 and Scream 5 and the process of how this movie had to earn its spot to be part of the franchise because they knew they wanted to talk about requels. That's of course we know the main theme or the main commentary of Scream 5. James then went on to state that they wanted, wanted this to be a sequel to all the movies and not just the first one, even though many of us would argue that with all the Scream sequels, it seems like that first movie is very important to all the scream sequels they glaze over the one that just came before them and <laughs> make it about the first movie billy and stew which i kind of feel like is a formula at this point that maybe there are maybe the those who are writing these movies I, I don't know if they're really aware of it but i'm i'm noticing that with the scream movies the sequels barely touch on the one that came before them they just always go back to the original so but in this case it was more meaningful since it was a requel anyway but uh again james talked about that how they how they wanted how they wanted this to be a sequel to the to all of them not just the first one he also mentioned how nev would give input on the dialogue sydney had which is great to hear james also continued on to say that this movie came from a place of fandom and love and i believe that it did sure there are things that they wrote that i wouldn't have done and things that they had executed that i wouldn't have done if i was the one bringing my fandom to life but again i'm not the one doing this they are so there was a part where james seems to have admitted the lack of chase scenes was intentional and that's fine but i know a lot of you want to have more chase scenes in scream six because the chase scenes allow us to build tension uh and so many other different things and i know a lot of people just they're really craving to have something like what we saw from gail in scream 2 brought to life again in any way not, not saying that gail has to be involved in it but a lot of people will say that's the best chase scene of the series if not one of the best uh guy said that a lot of a lot of the narrative decisions like dewey dying billy returning etc were done were done to remind us why we love scream so i'm gonna assume these two were in a place where they loved all the movies but they are in agreement that playing it safe gets old then guy said with six there they are like okay since five went well with all those risks we took i guess let's get a little bit more crazy here now i don't think that means that they should of course start writing any and all things no bad writing allowed of course but if you want to kill another character go ahead kill another lovable character go ahead make us feel like they're in danger go ahead throw in a neat twist in the mix obviously go ahead with that 
it really just comes down to how are you doing it why are you doing it because it didn't happen before why is it happening now and of course who i'm referring to when i'm saying that would be gail if they decide to kill gail it's going to come down to I'm not upset at the idea of killing Gail. The only character out of this series who I say I would say is completely off limits is Sydney Prescott. Even though you again can kill her if you want to, it's just I would say probably the biggest no-no you could do in this universe. But um because again, I'm not someone who's against killing Gail or Dewey. I'm not against that. What I'm against is good or bad writing. And I'm of course against bad writing. So and I know a lot of us will have a subjective difference in what we think bad and good writing is, and that's fine. If you are going to kill Gail, though, if that's what happens, or Mindy, or Kirby, or any of these other, because they, this movie has so many survivors in it, there is no way they are not going to break our hearts with Scream 6. They're going to have to. It's kind of written itself into a corner where you would have to when you bring all these survivors back. And then on top of that, introducing these new characters... You know, go ahead and go crazy with it. Don't go too crazy. And when I say don't go too crazy, again, that comes down to, well, how is it written? If you kill Gail, why did she die? What does her death do to the narrative? How does it push things forward? Is it meaningful or is it meaningless? Was it done in a way that was respectful to her? A lot of people are already coming out of Screen 5 thinking how Dewey was killed is disrespectful to Dewey. All in all, I don't think it was overly disrespectful. I just think there's certain things about how he died that I would have tweaked. I don't think his overall execution and the death they decided to do was disrespectful to him, not by any means. And there are just some things about it I would have tweaked. So when they're talking about, like, you know, let's see how far we can go. James kind of was like reminding Guy not to not to say too much, like he's getting into spoiler territory. So I'm like, these, these two are going to take some very big risk here. They're either going to kill gail they're gonna kill kirby they're gonna kill kirby gail and mindy chad you know they're gonna they're gonna break a lot of hearts with scream six and i just hope it's written very well or they could not be doing it i'm looking too far into it but we'll ultimately see what happens and again if you want to hear this interview i'll leave a link to it in the description because it was very entertaining to hear what these guys were thinking about but let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications and never miss a video in the description i'll have links to all my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video